18 by 9. It's a big trend in smartphone these days. That magic number may make your old 16 by 9 smartphones feel, well, outdated in comparison. And Xiaomi is a company that is no slouch when it comes to following trends. In fact, they're pretty much involved with everything from flying drones to even rice cookers. Really. Anyways, smartphones are still a main focus for Xiaomi and their Redmi line of phones have always been solid budget offerings. And now we have the Redmi 5 Plus in its latest iteration with an 18 by 9 ratio. But is there more? I've had roughly one month with the device and this is a review of the Redmi 5 Plus from Xiaomi. Now, the model I have with me now is the Plus variant that is bigger and more powerful than that of its sibling. Now, for design and build quality, the face of the Redmi 5 Plus is relatively clean and good looking. It's not exactly bezel-less, but more of less bezels with the 2.5D glass adding elegance to the design and feel of the phone. It does incorporate the 18 by 9 ratio, updating the design nicely for 2018. The back panel though is less of a story. It's the same old design Xiaomi has been using for years. The model I have with me now is the gold trimmed version and the color is closer to the champagne gold which is fine but seriously even a budget phone like this deserves an update to its design at some point. Fortunately, the material choice of aluminium feels solid in the hands, resists fingerprints well, and probably is more durable than cheap glass. The buttons feel okay and the fingerprint scanner is very fast and accurate. The curves on the edges also do allow for a comfortable grip and I had no trouble with the size of the phone even with my average sized male hands. For the screen, um, well, besides the aspect ratio, there isn't really much that Xiaomi is pushing for. The screen is a 6 inch 1080p IPS display, which doesn't say much either. Uh, it won't offer the punchy colors of an OLED screen, but has pretty good viewing angles and gets moderately bright, which is serviceable enough for most folks. Now, the performance, well, depends on how you look at it. This is the most high-end model with the 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage, expandable via a micro SD card. Inside, only for the Plus models, is the Snapdragon 625 processor, which Xiaomi is pretty much abusing at this point. This processor has been on pretty much every mid-range handset Xiaomi has offered for the past year. And not that that's a bad thing, but Given that most mid-range smartphones in 2018 will ship with the more recent 630 or the 636 processors, you might feel a bit left out in the power department later. Still, the 6 to 5 processor feels relatively snappy for the casual use, and because it's a less power-hungry chipset, coupled with the massive 4000 mAh battery and the Full HD display, the phone delivers great performance in battery life. Casual use with browsing the web, frequent messaging, and some 3D gaming, the phone was left with well over 30% by nighttime. The downside is it takes much longer to charge that massive battery over the phone's outdated micro USB port. What's not outdated though, at least in my opinion, is the 3.5mm headphone jack placed on the top, which is always a plus. There's not much to say about the speakers though. Its single downward firing placement is average, does get moderately loud, but lacks in clarity. And software wise, it's running Xiaomi's own version of Android, MIUI 9, which I might do a review about soon. If that's something you want to see, give this video a thumbs up to let me know. For the most part, MIUI 9 runs mostly smoothly on the phone's hardware and is a big improvement compared to MIUI 8. Sadly though, Android Oreo update is yet to arrive and my Chinese model didn't allow the use of any other launchers so you're kinda stuck with what you get with the iOS-like theme. 
Although it was refreshingly surprising how Xiaomi continued fully supporting my Xiaomi Mi 5 for the past two years, and hopefully they'll do the same for their budget devices. The camera is a 12 megapixel lens that delivers surprisingly great pictures and good lighting. The only catch is without any type of stabilization, you'll need to keep a steady hand. I frequently missed some pictures due to this problem. At low light, the images do tend to be on the noisy side, but then again, that pretty much goes the same for all smartphone cameras. It would also have been nice for Xiaomi to include the full range of manual controls you get on its Mi flagships, since they are all software based anyways. But here are a few sample photos and videos so you can see for yourself. The phone calls were tested on the Chinese network where this phone was made for and I had no problems with either call quality or network coverage. Now you probably noticed a certain theme with this phone here. This obviously isn't the super phone people drew over, after all it's a Redmi. But it always turns out to be a reliable device that gets a lot of the essentials right, while not making a giant hole in your wallet. Now it should be noted that the actual value of these Chinese smartphones quite differ based on where you are and what competing smartphones there are available. So I suggest you explore more options when you can. But if you are someone who doesn't care about all the bells and whistles and just wants a smartphone to do the fundamentals right, you should have no problem with the Redmi 5 Plus. I give it my recommendation. Thank you for watching this video and please like and subscribe while you're at it for more content.